Hi everybody, did you remember you subscribed to this channel ages ago? You probably don't remember because it's been more than a year since I posted on here and I stopped posting because the videos on here just didn't get the kind of traction that my other videos got. But anyways, on the topic of this channel, which is about YouTube, I've recently been on the Chad and Steve have a podcast. That's the name of the podcast because it's by Chad and Steve Ramsey and they're both old-time YouTubers and they've been talking a lot about the business of YouTube and how YouTube has changed. And since I've been on YouTube for a long time as well, I was a good fit for a guest on there and it was a lot of fun and I'll probably be on that podcast again in the future. But rather than just announce that, I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I see YouTube has changed. In fact, I have a whole series of uh, notes on that. Maybe I can do it in one take. YouTube has really changed a lot. Uh, I'm thinking back when I first got on it, there was a lot of uh, silly little videos like uh, Charlie Bit My Finger and uh, Mystery Guitar Man was big, which were a lot of novelty type of videos. And my Marble Machine videos did really well because that sort of quick little novelty thing was what YouTube was all about at the time. And then uh, things started to go viral and marketing agencies got into it because at the time, if you put a good amount of effort into it, it was possible to design a video to go viral and actually have it go viral. Something that doesn't really work anymore today. Then eventually monetization happened, I don't think somewhere around 2012 or so. And that really started to change the game because people that were really successful at YouTube actually made money at it, made a living at it. And that got a whole lot of people uh, piling in. And as YouTube got bigger, mainstream media started to uh, not like it so much. And it was mainstream media that uh, was behind the first adpocalypse and subsequent ones. Because of course the content on YouTube is rather varied and some of it is more palatable to advertisements than others. And it was in mainstream media's best interest to say YouTube is bad, 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 bad. Don't spend your ad dollars on it. Spend it on us instead, of course. At the time, uh, say going back to 2015 or so, there was... Um, YouTube suggested videos that were popular and those suggested videos got a lot of views which made them more popular which made them rank higher in the YouTube algorithm which of course meant that they were suggested more and all of that kept a lot of big early YouTubers on top which uh, as long as YouTube wasn't that old or hadn't been that big for that long the guys that were successful there wasn't a need for that much churn at the time yet but I think that sort of changed with the PewDiePie uh, controversy where he was accused of anti-Semitism. Although, if you actually look into what it was that he was accused for, it was very much played up. You know, just like nowadays, uh, any sort of random slight misstep uh, is mischaracterized as somebody's being racist and all that kind of nonsense. Anyways, I think that led to a change in how YouTube worked things because having these big powerful YouTubers like PewDiePie was a problem and I think they started tweaking the algorithm to cause a bit more churn in terms of discovering smaller YouTubers that were really good and of course that was a really good thing for YouTube because newer people that piled in they never got the views and so they never got the suggestion and all that so it, uh, I think, probably was kind of becoming a bit stagnant and by changing that so it was less stagnant that made the powerful YouTubers less powerful which was good for YouTube as a company and also good for YouTube in terms of having more excellent creators on there and getting lots of views which of course encourages more excellent creators. Uh, another interesting thing that really changed YouTube to me was YouTube involved was YouTube introducing audience retention stats. I think somewhere around 2012, I was just looking back in my videos and that's as far back as I can get stats on that. Um, and that's sort of like giving everyone a free education in video editing because you could look on your video and see where people dropped off. And I think very quickly people realized that these long intros like TV had always been doing was not something people wanted to watch and credits, forget that sort of stuff. You can put that in the description. Uh, so that really helped make YouTube a much better 
platform or have better videos on it because creators suddenly had much better stats than the TV folks had about what works and what doesn't work. And it's one of the things that help YouTube really become much better. It used to be that YouTube wasn't nearly as good as TV and now if I look at TV I'm going it's like this is crap compared to what's on YouTube. Except for maybe sitcoms. If you want to watch that, uh, TV is definitely the place for that. But nowadays, uh, people who get onto YouTube and succeed are people with a plan. It used to be going back to the early days of YouTube because nobody was expecting YouTube to go anywhere. It was random people that succeeded that put some stuff out there that the audience liked and then they put more on there. So a lot of the early successes are not necessarily because of natural talent. It's because they were early. Whereas nowadays, the successes are people who have natural talent, invest lots of time and money in making videos. So your accidental successes, unfortunately, aren't going to happen like they used to. But of course, the videos nowadays are also much, much better. But sadly, it's become more like TV in that it's become enough of a mainstream thing that the videos do really well appeal to everybody not necessarily some tech geek or somebody who looks for something specific, some niche content. It's hit the broadest audience possible and unfortunately those videos do really well with the YouTube algorithm so they suggest they get suggested way more and that kind of swamps out some of the uh, older, more specific, more in-depth content that YouTube is really good at. I hope they adjust the algorithms to swamp those out a bit less. I mean, you look at the YouTube trending page and as far as I'm concerned, it's like almost all crap. And then of course, you know, the latest problem I think is this whole culture war getting onto YouTube and anything that disagrees with the views inside the California tech bubble is I think the algorithms are tweaked to de-emphasize that as much as possible. And I think maybe a small side benefit of COVID will be more remote working and that this bubble effect will be weakened a bit in that a lot of the tech workers will be socializing, not necessarily with other people in the California tech scene, but with people across the country more so. Time will tell. Anyways, YouTube is constantly evolving. I kind of see a YouTube era being on the order of like, three to five years and there are probably many more eras yet to come. It's not about to go away. Some people, you know, wish YouTube went away because it has problems, of course. But like Microsoft Windows or IBM or that sort of thing, it may become less important over time, but it's not going to go away. Anyways, that's my thoughts on YouTube in a nutshell. Maybe I'll talk more about that with uh, Chad and Steve on a future podcast. And I think this is pretty long now. I see the minute counter is at 7.50 for this clip. So I'll end it here. Bye. Oh, and go watch that podcast. Chad and Steve have a podcast.